that can be sent to them. That's that's important. Uh, Amazon, I believe, will be carrying the product. So we'll we'll know more uh, as we get closer to the release date, which should be sometime in January of 2013 for the uh, the director's cut on DVD. And of course, you know, like any good DVD, uh, we'll put uh, we'll put the the activism scenes that were long, obviously, much longer than what you saw in the film. Uh, we're going to try to put as many of those on the disc as possible. If this thing, this interview here turns out decent, I don't know about the lighting situation, but if it turns out all right, we'll put that on the disc. And we are, after this today, after the lunch in the park, by the way, hopefully you'll join us for that, uh, the three of us are going to go and record a commentary track for the film. So that's, you know, it's kind of the, the fun DVD things that uh, some people like to, uh, to see. We're, we're going to have all that. Uh, so, if there are any other questions, I think we may have a, see somebody in the back there who does. That's excellent. Uh, come right on up, and then uh, we'll just wrap this up after any other questions that uh, y'all might have. And I believe it was it Greg, if I'm recalling yeah, correctly. Feel free great. to tilt that mic up towards you there, since you're right. pretty tall. Uh, Thank you. I really like the part with the thanks but no tanks part. I was wondering if you could go through that sequence of events of how you got that to work well, and how someone could use that as a kind of a template to do activism in the area. Okay, well, yeah, thanks, thanks, Greg, for the question. And uh, it was about how did thanksbutnotanks.com come about? Um, I imagine, like, how, how is it a successful campaign? Uh, right. Um, well, I don't know how I initially heard about the tank coming to town. Does anyone? I mean, I'm sure with an audience like this, someone remembers how the first news of it came about. I guess it was through Clarky, um, who heard that his dad had said no. He had been the only no vote uh, against the tank. And it started with that and a petition that he ran where he got uh, 400 signatures uh, plus signed from members of the community. Right? It, it was one of those things that all happened, but it was it, it's such a big, uh, the Thanks But No Tanks campaign is such a it's it's so wide in scope it's it's hard to say that you know there wasn't one person orchestrating that and saying well you go do this and then you go do that uh, it was it was kind of like the premiere of this film where I you know we put it out there that this was going to happen and then I didn't tell Garrett Ian to go out and start chalking or Daryl to go out and chalk on the sidewalks in downtown Keene to advertise this film happening so the same thing with thanks but no tanks is that uh, you know what we have and one of the strengths of this movement is uh, the liberty movement in New Hampshire is that it's decentralized so yes we're all combining our efforts in one geographic location but nobody's in charge so everybody just does what they think is most effective so Clarkey you know did the petition and a bunch of people went out including myself we went out and we got those petition signatures there were flyers that were printed up Jason Talley came up with thanks but no tanks.com uh, and you know there was media being produced in various different aspects going out to various different uh, delivery methods from YouTube to Freaking TV and it's just you know you can't even really put your thumb on any one thing or one person that that did it and of course ultimately you know they got the tank anyway but uh, you know there was a lot of outreach and a lot of I think I think the success of the thanks but no tanks campaign was that most people agreed with it uh, the super majority of people in town something like 80 90 percent of people in Keene were on board so whether they're left or right or neither uh, a lot of folks uh, were on board with those with the idea of rejecting that so there's no one answer to that question well yeah and I see it uh, it was uh, you mentioned there were so many different facets so many so many uh, uh, parts going into that campaign um, that really is like the beauty that is the, the fact that uh, it wasn't your no none of us really like felt alone in our efforts you know, like we, we really, I mean, even though they, they got the tank or whatever, uh, I think we set a precedent in the town. Uh, well, not a precedent in the town, but also a precedent uh, nationwide in that Keene was the very first place that Lenko, uh, the company that manufactures these tanks, uh, that Lenko had ever had any kind of pushback. Anybody, no one anywhere else besides Keene ever had any kind of organized in any fashion opposition to uh, this thing. And they even brought their head salesman into one of those city council meetings 
to where he could uh, you know, try to keep the sale, uh, basically, because they were nervous they were going to lose the sale. And uh, they never, the, the head salesman told me they'd never experienced anything like, like what happened here. And I know that wouldn't have been possible without the great, some of the great folks that are in this audience uh, tonight or today. It's the morning still. Uh, but, uh, so we're almost out of time here. I think we might have time for one more question. If there's anyone else with a question for uh, Derek or Bo or, uh, or just an observation, something I want to share. Otherwise, I had one question for you, Derek. Was it worth it? I think this is the question that everybody or a lot of people like to ask. You know, you spent 60 days in jail. Uh, there's hundreds of days over your head that uh, they're holding over you on a suspended sentence. Was it worth it? I wouldn't trade this experience for anything, no. It was absolutely worth it. Uh, I wouldn't doubt that for a second. Even while I was in jail, I was um, so gleeful and, and smiley because I knew that uh, this, this was exactly what I wanted to be doing. And so, yes, it was, it was worth it. And I hope that all of you enjoyed as well. All right, so we're going to uh, clean things up. Remember, as you're getting up, there is that uh, wire going down the aisle, so be very mindful of that. Uh, park, Ashwaylet Park. If you don't know where it is, it's uh, right on the corner of Island Street and West Street here in Keene, just down the road, just a short bit. Uh, Daryl, I believe you've got sandwiches, chips, $3 and $3 for drinks. a bag lunch. $3 for a bag lunch, sandwich, chips, and drink, or bring your own if you don't like that. Uh, but it sounds great. What kind of sandwiches? There's bologna and cheese, and if you do not like meat, if you're one of those vegetable-tarian people, I have Nutella sandwiches. Awesome. We'll look forward to seeing you at Ashwell Park, uh, 1215, the approximate start time. And thanks again for coming out to this movie premiere. I'm so glad that we could do this for you. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, Derek.